all psychology concerning Africa is African psychology. Some people think this is provocative, but under that then, um, I, I make some distinctions. So recently, people like Augustine Noye, Maluse Makubela, Wachbilong, and a number of others have produced interesting papers around African psychologists. Sometimes this has been great, but sometimes it has added to the confusion, worsened this decades old confusion about the definition, the scope, uh, the long term aims. What do we do when we say we're doing African psychology within South Africa? Within South Africa. So, what I'm trying to do is to clarify after refreshing. Uh, but I also do a little more than clarify, as I've just mentioned, this idea that African psychology is all psychology concerning Africa. I do more than that. So about what I, in my reading of, of the archive uh, in South Africa, about the history of psychology in South Africa in particular, um, what I draw out of it, what the people have been trying to do, but I also do this in the light of calls for decolonization and how we might design courses, design courses perhaps, uh, help in, in how we might work as activists, as therapists, as uh, students in psychology. Uh, and more importantly, how to build networks around this idea of African psychology. So after a, a fashion then, I'm trying to clarify certain misperceptions that I, I think uh, one comes across and this fashion is frequently asked questions, but also not so frequently asked questions. First then, and I get this clearly, I'm answering this to my students in particular. Is African psychology a psychology that studies Africans? Now while there's always a misreading that this is what psychology, including by the way, black psychology, while there's a misreading that that reduces African psychology to a psychology that studies only Africans. Literature, it tells you this, literature in South Africa, but also other parts of Africa and the Americas, including in particular the US, is, is that African psychology is the study of all forms of behavior. It's all forms of behavior. Uh, relationships, including behaviors of and relationships between non-Africans and Africans, but also Africans and the environment in which they live, including uh, animals. So a crucial point in answer to this question is that all of psychology concerning, to repeat myself, done in for Africa, about Africans, by Africans, as well as non-Africans, is African psychology. I take this, it's a simple thing. In 1970, Pauline Hontonj, who people have heard me earlier, makes this, this as soon as he cottoned onto a simple fact that African philosophy is about texts. It's it, that's it. African psychology is about texts. Nothing more, nothing less. But under that then is a scheme that I will put to you. So although there's a differences and debates and all of that, and sometimes not a very nice way to debate uh, if you've been reading this literature recently. Uh, people literally almost calling each other names about how you know, ignorant you are and, and so on. So although we come to this idea of African psychology from different perspective, uh, some roots lead in different ways, including close to this idea, but others uh, lead to, to other, other uh, avenues. So uh, if you are going to ask, uh, to make a distinction, if you are going to ask about identities, about actors, about subjects, uh, so who's the student, who's writing this, uh, who's the therapist, who's the client, uh, you are going to go uh, into one area of, of, psycho of African psychology. Uh, and some, some African psychologists are inclined towards this. Um, even some critics, in particular, some critics think African psychology is this. So this sort of thing would lead you to a psychology that says, that defines psychology studies and therapies of whatever it is that we're studying, on or for, and sometimes even by Africans. All the same, uh, while there are these researchers, there's other uh, uh, researchers and therapists and teachers who think differently. And these second categories of teachers would define African psychology this way. It's a psychology 
basically that identifies with Africa, that situates itself in Africa, uh, in relation to Africa and from Africa. So basically African psychology is all like liberatory psychology. It's situated psychology. It, it, it seeks to do that. It might do this not very well, but sometimes it does it very well. Like Latin American psychology, uh, uh, people like Maritza Montero, they're trying to do a Latin American sort of psychology. But it's because this, this term, African, which I will say right now, that tends to confuse the, the, the terms. The second question, why is there a need for African psychology if it's not necessarily psychology that studies Africans? Well, a, sh a short answer. African psychology, this thing called African psychology, but particularly the second version I referred to, has been an attempt since 1969, once again, 1969, 1960, 1970, 1970 uh, in a South African medical journal, is an attempt to get out from under Euro-American centered psychology. That's it, that's the real main impetus. It seeks, even though it might not use those words, it seeks to decolonize itself. And so words like relevance, appropriateness, uh, have been used over time, including people who might not even use these words, people who, who think about a community-centric sort of psychology, are trying to get out from a certain way of thinking about psychology. Now, I'm not going to go into this. There is no direct correspondence between a decolonized psychology and African psychology. There's no one-to-one -one correspondence. They overlap sometimes, but sometimes an African psychology can be conservative. Well, I already telegraphed this. Is the name then African psychology limiting? Of course it is. It's limiting in the way that American psychology is not. American psychology is desired. You desire to do American psychology. But African psychology, even the critical psychologists in this country tend to say, no, we don't want to do this. It's because of a misreading that I've already pointed out. But the name, because the name is conflated with blackness, maybe even with backwardness, uh, with conservatism, instead of thinking of African psychology in the way I've defined it right at the beginning. But sometimes it's necessary to do this, to write African psychology, particularly if you're writing against a Euro-American psychology. Now, the, 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 this problem also bedevils Chinese psychology, Latin American psychology, because all these psychologies are supposed to be ghetto psychologies, not real psychologies, right? Although clearly, as I indicated, psych African psychology is about, about texts, and there is a variety of texts. So once again, let me repeat this. Unless one wants to twist oneself into some all kinds of knots, and I've said this already, all psychology regarding Africa and Africans on the continent and in the diaspora has to be counted into the body of knowledge of what is seen as African psychology. This is a straightforward thing. Psychology in Africa, African psychology. <clears throat> Except when it is not. And more often it is not. What do I mean? It's because with the name African psychology, the problem that arises, arises out of the debates about uh, histories of slavery, colonialism and racism. So there's a conflation about a certain way of thinking about this, about identities and, and knowledge. So African psychology then starts to participate, to partake in ontological, epistemological, and political contexts, such as those who is African, whose home is Africa, and so forth. And as I said, why then use this term? Because it's quite complicated. Because uh, that word, in front of psychology is actually a blank. That all psychologists are situated psychologists. All psychologists are situated. In front of psychology, if it comes from America, it is American psychology. But somehow, because of the way these terms take on, accrete to certain meanings, African psychology is locked on with suspicion. So some people tend to reserve the word African psychology for a psychology that centers Africa and psychology in Africa as this broad body of knowledge. But even when you have uh, responded to this question, it keeps on coming back, at least from, for me, from my students, about, about you know, should we say African psychology? Should we say this? It's a blank psychology, blank psychology. The blank here is about situatedness. So what do I mean by saying African psychology is situated? Situated knowledge, situated African knowledge and practice 
is knowledge that is conscious of its where, where, what is happening, right? Situated who, who has made this knowledge. The more you read Freud or Marx, if you are not a psychologist, the more you start to realize that there's a certain view about Africa that doesn't represent me at all here. I don't feature in this, right? That Freud was not writing for someone like me. When Freud says primitive, right? When Freud says primitive, he's talking about me, my people, a certain generation. So there's a certain way that is quite curious about reading Freud when Freud was calling you primitive. I could stop right there. So situation knowledge signals location, position, orientation, and what feminists call feminist standpoint. So to be situated uh, is to appreciate the biography of knowledge, its sociality, its perspective, its interactions. So African psychology in this light is situated psychology, at least in the second sense I was talking about. It's the same thing as British psychology, as Chinese psychology, Islamic psychology, Latin American psychology. All psychology is situated situated knowledge. I think I should move on from that one. Uh, but first I should say, what is called African psychology then is not a separate body of knowledge, but a way of situating yourself. Particularly what is called African-centered knowledge. It is how one thinks about the subjects in which you study. Am I studying this using the concept from the US, from Western Europe? In my case, as I said earlier in a presentation, I tend to rely, like most of us, a lot on this concept called hegemonic masculinities. But the more you immerse yourself, 1987 book, this is the first time it's, it's, it comes out clearly, Raywin Cornell, Gender and Power, and actually 1985 with her students before, well, his students before she transitioned. Don't know whether you say she transitioned or he transitioned, but anyway, before Raywin transitioned, rise with Rewin students about this hegemonic masculinity and picks it up in 1987, writes it about it again in, in 1995, and it is the most cited concept in dealing with masculinities, sociology of masculinities around the world. And you can't get around that. But she knows this, she's aware of this. So the point right there is using these concepts and thinking of Africa as a site of application rather than theory making. And she has been pushing that there, is south, there are southern concepts. Use them. Think about them. Okay. And so in the end, this is where I come uh, to about to repeat to those who were earlier with me that the moment you start to think of African psychology as, a, as this body of knowledge concerning, so, so you start to see how people are writing about it. It, it. it demands you and your students to read a wide body of knowledge. And there are many orientations, many perspectives, many ways of thinking what is psychology. And mine are these four things. That the most dominant way of thinking about psychology is a Western-oriented African psychology, meaning psychology in Africa. That most of us are taught in this way of thinking. That you can't get around it. Your teachers were taught in this, you were taught in this, and they rely on thinking about the human about the self by importing concepts and tech, thinking about ourselves. They can't seem to get around this. We can't. I'm part of this. I can't seem to get around. But you started to see a few people thinking differently. About, let's think about this a little harder. Does hegemonic masculinity, for instance, make sense among young poor men? That's the concept of Erickson's identity theory. Identity development, does it make sense all the same? When children raise themselves, does it make sense? Right? You, can, you can take all kinds of stuff that you are interested in. And trauma, some people here might, might be here who think about trauma. If you live in a country where trauma happens on a daily basis, when trauma happens on such a daily basis, does some of the work around PTSD really make sense? Somebody is hungry, they're raped, they live in a shack, when they go to school, they have to walk 20 kilometers or whatever. Does it make sense? So most people tend then to borrow from certain concepts to, to make understanding. Some, it doesn't mean they totally don't, don't make sense, but they, they can take you only so far. And then you have a critical African psychology under which I include feminist psychology, a certain political, psycho, a certain political psychology, uh, and, and, and other kinds of critical psychologies. And a cultural African psychology, uh, when I published this, 
say last, when I published this, the, 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 the people who are interested mostly to invite me are the people who say, so tell us about Africa and culture, uh, cultural African psychology. Well, this is what I'm trying to avoid, that we don't only do cultural African psychology. But if the people who are inviting you say, write about cult culture in Africa, and sometimes you have to, to give them what they want. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>